Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea. Welcome to a best of three from the GSL between Cure and Stats. Starting here on site Delta. New patch, new maps, new me, new you. This is like the... I, I feel like normies that are not into StarCraft, they care very much about New Year's. You know, they it's like, ah, New Year's, I'm gonna start hitting the gym, I'm gonna start eating healthy uh, stuff, you know, that is beating my kids or whatever it is, you know. Um, <clears throat> but... Starcraft 2 gamers, you know, as we all are, they look at a new season, a new patch, and like, oh, I'm gonna practice hard, and I'm gonna stop cheesing, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do that. You know, they they have this whole, they have this whole, you know, playbook thought out of what they're gonna do in the new season, and they play four games, uh, macro games, honest, honorable macro games, and they hate the new map, they hate the new units. They go back to cannon rushing or proxying every single game. Is a true story. Ooh, what do we have here? Look at this. Look at this. A 17 Nexus out of stats. 18 gas, 18 core. Now we're talking. This is a build order. This is, this is such a cool build order. 126 on that cybernetic score. Come, come, come. So this is the opener that Parting popularized for a little bit. Parting played it uh, in particular with a three gate pressure behind it. Stats now playing it. Hasn't Corona boosted his units once? Yeah, that's a little bit late, but I'm okay with it. What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Now, disadvantage number one is actually very simple. is that you can't really scout with it. Because if you scout with it, the build doesn't work. Your core will be too delayed and it honestly just kind of sucks. Um, the advantages are that you have a relatively fast unit because your cybernetic score is only delayed by two seconds and you also have an extremely quick nexus that means you can quickly start mining from it um, your gas count is okay -ish. it's not great it's fine you can play twilight council builders relatively well with this opener i think when i'm playing stargate i prefer not doing this particular opener but a nexus before core but with twilight openers which is what i'm kind of assuming here is going to happen uh, this is a, a completely okay thing to do. First step, gonna make his way across the map. Ooh, we have a triple CC here. Second barracks as well coming up. And this was a marine into reactor. Three marines are out to deal with that first adapt. Still haven't seen our tech being thrown down, by the way. It's instead going to be a stalker now. And now a robotics facility. Okay. I mean, this, you're allowed to play this, technically. This is not necessarily illegal. In a way, this is probably the best build order you you can possibly get, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, here we go. Good split shots means that he can now uh, one volley that Marine. Finishes the shade, which feels risky. He's gonna have to shade out. Did deny a little bit of mining time, so just a good move all around, I think. We can all agree on that. Other adept still here. Stalker at home. Three gate robo. Battery defensively as well. Now if you're stats in this position. How are you feeling about life? I think you're feeling pretty darn good. To be honest. And I'm loving the prism here. I think that's a good call. I'd love to see a really quick robo bay as well. I'm surprised how easily stats managed to read this game by the way. Can I just say that? It feels like Stats has a, an observer in his opponent's base. Because this is as hard counter-ish as you're gonna get. Like, this is the hardest hard counter. This is the worst case scenario here for Kier. Now, that doesn't mean that Kier is dead. But it does mean he's in some serious trouble. I'd love to see one observer. Yep. one. Like, literally everything I want is being done right now. This is, this is how life is supposed to be. With your build order lining up perfectly, he's going to put the two adapts plus, I guess, one more unit. Yep, a stalker in the prism, and it means that he can one-shot workers. Any amount of worker kills is going to be fantastic. Literally any amount of worker kills is going to be fantastic. Third base now on the way out as well. We have this heading in towards the main base. Marines trying to move in position as our Protoss player here. Going to get one kill. We'll be forced into picking up once more. Uh, not the greatest amount of damage. What do we have here on the units lost tap? 150 resources lost. Full scout, though, out of stats. Has seen the third command center as well, which is a relatively big deal. The observer is kind of in uh, no man's land over here. It's not really keeping uh, you know some pressure here on, our, on the ramp or some pressure, some vision on the ramp, which is going to be really the main spot 
that you want to have vision on. I'm going to move it forward just a little bit. Prism tries to move back in. And perhaps with this Colossus out, we can get something done. Because that Colossus is going to be absolutely key. The reason why Colossus drops are so powerful against triple CC openers or against three Rex openers is because majority of the production time is going to be spent building Marines, especially at the start, because all of your gas needs to be going into tech, into upgrades, into starports, into stim, into combat shield, concussive shells, uh, reactors. That's where your gas is going. So the units you're building are going to be non-gas units, which often means that the Terran in the early game ends up with a very high marine count. And marines freaking suck against Colossus. They're terrible. They, they're, yeah, they're just garbage all around. So ideally, if you have a Colossus in a prism, you can target down some of these marines. That's huge. And then you also have the ability behind it to go for another push. So this was a, uh, a charge follow-up here. Thermal Lance is about to finish as well. First Medivac is n just now popping out. First two Medivacs, I should say, are just now popping out. Dark Shrine on the way. Like, to me, this feels like stats went for the perfect setup, but hasn't quite used the Colossus, the, the, the ability of the Colossus to deal with Marines very well. And now Kira is trying to take a bit of map control. And this is going to be extremely important. The moment stats gets to walk across the map, he might just be capable of straight up winning the game. So it's absolutely key here that Cure keeps his opponent busy. We have the Graphitic Drive here coming on, the War Prism Speed. As well as another cannon. Eight gates are about to finish up. I think Stats is just about to walk across the map. Uh, he's just now building a fort base relatively late, given that he was playing against a triple CC opener of his opponent. And it once again tells us that Stats' plans here are very aggressive. This one medevac is just going to straight up die. That is minus, what, 10 supply or so that just went down. No problem here for Stats. No problem here for Stats. We're still looking to find an angle. And he's going to find that angle here because this is going to be forced back home as well. Boost there got wasted. Cure ideally wants to head out for a base trade, but I'm not so sure if he can head out for a base trade. Phoenix, oh, sorry, sentries are close by. Force fields does available. Charge has now officially finished up as well. We're going to get an 8-unit warp in. Two of those are going to be DTs, perhaps heading in towards the natural and the main base. Ooh, he's going to drop him. He's going to try and drop him. Viking count, non-existent. First two now on the way. It's going to be three Colossus, uh, five, six sentries available. Uh, five, six force fields available on these sentries. Here we go. That's one, two. Not the greatest force fields, but it's going to be good enough. Nice target fire there on those Marines with the Colossus. As this prism is going to make its way in towards the main base, there is still no turret quite yet here. That means scans need to be used. The speed on that prism is going to be helping out stats an amazing amount as well. As here, we're going to be moving in forward. We have the dancing with the Colossus versus the Marauders. And so far, the Marauders are not enjoying this dance. 14 SCVs have gone down. We see that the DTs are still alive in the main base as well. Marauders now in a big unit trying to move forward. And Sniper Colossus do not quite get it. And the Marauder shield, the meat shield in front of these Marines, is about to disappear. And that means that it's just going to be Marines against these Colossus. And that is a serious issue. Once this final Marauder disappears, these Colossus are just going to absolutely laser these Marines to death. And even at this point, yeah, GG is just going to get called. Cure forced to tap out. Pretty much a straight up build order win for Stat. Still managed to play it out properly, though. And gets a W. 1-0 on the board. Honestly, the way that that game was played felt like a game from the... 2017s or something like that like it it really felt like an old school game with these type of slow uh, robotics facility styles that take a long long time to kind of get online but he honestly hit a freaking home run when it came to uh, you know the build order he was up against playing against any type of barracks focus play with a robotics facility first opener is just very very beneficial for the robo first opener if you are yourself struggling with with, with heavy marine start then a robo-opener can be quite powerful. Now, of course, it struggles much more with uh, threats that can come from multiple directions. So things like Widow Mind Drops, Raven Harass, even Banshees or Liberators can be really difficult to deal with just because you don't have any type of catch. There are no Phoenixes, you don't have Blink, so you can't defend two bases at the same time. You need to spread your units very thinly, and that can, that can just be mean trouble for you. It really can just mean trouble. Cure here is going to jump up onto this little high ground. Tries to get a scout, but the tech is actually hidden in the natural base this time around. So we see the Twilight Council going down there. What was this? This was a sentry. Ooh, this is a sexy build, isn't it? 
Sentry into Stalker. Stalker, triple gate as a follow-up. We have some serious Chronos here on the Nexus, by the way. This is extremely rare for a Twilight opener. Now, why is that rare for a Twilight opener? It's because one of the main benefits of the Twilight opener is the ability to stop Widow Mind drops or uh, any type of drop really from coming in there by utilizing the Blink ability. Now, we see stats here not actually going for that. He's not going to be utilizing that blink ability to stop the initial fly. And he's going to use it later on, maybe when there's multiple threats, whether it's going to be, uh, you know, medevac, mine, uh, plus a raven, or some type of frontal push. Blink is going to be very useful. So go straight into four gases here. I don't want to say that this is unheard of, but it is uncommon, at least. This is extremely uncommon, for sure. So we have this medevac now moving out. So once again, just a heavy focus here on gas and most likely on Colossus as a result. Late third phase. So a, a serious delay here on the uh, on the eco of stats. And that means that any worker he will lose is going to be even more painful than it usually would be. Even more painful than it usually would be. He does not want to lose any. Does not want to lose any workers. Let's see, is he in the right position? He's going to be capable of stopping this medevac from flying in. That is a relatively big deal. Robobay goes down 4 minutes and 50 seconds into the game. There are 7 stalkers out already. We have the 3 gates, which gives us the ability to quickly reinforce positions, as well as to move across the map if stats please us to. Nexus goes down over here on the 3rd base right now. And so, ooh, Cure's actually going to commit to this. Blink not quite done yet. This really is the issue I was talking about earlier. This medevac could have come back. Of course, uh, Cure not aware of that. Probably thought that Blink was going to finish up anytime soon now. Yeah, this delayed Blink. Costing him a couple of workers and a stalker. Or maybe a worker and a stalker. But Cure getting caught off guard by it. Probably believed that it was, was done already. Could have saved these mines. So just to believe that Blink was done. Sometimes is, is good enough. And it was good enough this time around. We have a Forge. We have a Charge. We have a Colossus. And now we're going to get our Thermal Lands as our next upgrade that is important. Very gas-heavy. Does have a Sentry, of course, from that early game still. So that's a nice thing. Just the fact that you still have the Sentry around. It's going to be usually beneficial, obviously. Medivac here, just relaxing in the dead space for now. As we have a... Uh, I'd call this a minor push-out. This is not a serious commitment quite yet. The Medivacs aren't out. Oh, wait, they are? What the hell? This is fast. Oh, wow, I thought these two medevacs were the first, too. But I guess all we really had here was a mine drop and a heli. And there was no need for a tank whatsoever because there was no serious threat of this being a four, four or three gate prison blink. Cure here with some very cute identifications of the build is going to be uh, granted a lot of freedom due to the sentry opener. One of the main disadvantages of the Sentry Opener is that it allows the Terran player to get away with skipping tanks. And that means that Stim and Combat finish quicker. That means that the first two Medivacs are faster, but also Medivac 3 and 4 are much, much quicker. Good spread here of the units by stats, who is completely in position. Completely in position. I'm zero worried about him. Oh, okay, I'm a little worried about him right now. Ooh! To blink forward, it's gonna snipe this bad boy down. No battery in this natural means that it's going to be a tough hold. As the uh, mine does burrow, gets a decent uh, amount of splash on these zealots as well. Charge is about to finish up in a second or two. So now we're gonna get a big drop in towards the main base. This was all in vision though of this observer. I'm not sure if Stats is aware of it. He technically scouted it, but did he spot it as well? I don't think so. I mean, a cheeky little boost in towards the main base would be huge. There's no battery, there's no cannon, there's no ability for the Colossus to walk up here because this is a full wall. Stalker's now moving out of the way. Yeah, Stats is blind. Stats is absolutely blind at this point. And this could potentially be game-ending damage as Cure is going to continue dropping. And never stop. At least not for now. Here comes a triple drop. It's going to boost in towards the main base, while simultaneously we have these drops. Wanting to go in towards the natural, perhaps. We still have nothing here being warped in. Does spot it now. Oh, what a terrible move here by Cure. It's giving his opponent such, an, such a long warning here. That's like a warning shot, but without shooting anything. So just 
it makes no sense. A little bit slow there on the movement. Now double drop heading in towards the natural, but scanned forward. Saw plenty of units in position. This fort base should get cancelled, I believe. And it's gonna get cancelled. Just don't see any any way in which Stats is gonna keep this alive. Charles want to charge in. That's what they do best, after all. Gonna get a big pickup as these uh, zealots, yeah. Gonna finish up these Widow Mine Stalkers in position in the main. That's such an awkward position that he's in, though, as so. Uh, blink forward, yes. Gonna get quite some damage here on the Metafax. We have Vikings in production already. Two are out. Fort Base should be on the way soon as well. So now we have a Prism with the Gravitic Drive coming out once again. That Prism speed, speed that Stats is oh so uh, fond of. This is an exciting uh, game. This is very high pace. Ever since the start, just constant action, basically. We're trying to get a snipe here on one of these Colossus. Good pullback on that one Colossus. As the pylon's going to get sniped, one or two more of these zealots are going to fall as well. But this is going to be the end of this presence on the map. We'll be boosting away towards the right side. As at the same time, the prison flies into a turret. DT is now walking in towards the third base, but we already have a missile turret done. No fort quite yet here for Cure. Something he might want to start considering right now is uh, trying to work towards that moment. At that, that point where you uh, are going to get a fort base out. I mean, he's going to get the double upgrades. This is such a late fort. This almost feels like, a, like an all-in timing here. Where if he does not get significant damage with the next push, he's going to be in some trouble. He's also hitting at a pretty offbeat timing to be honest look at that 50 seconds before 2-2 ghost not quite on the map yet either like this does not feel like the timing to hit at the moment like this absolutely does not feel like the timing to hit ghosts are now popping out cure needs to stall a little bit longer but every second you stall means another warp in means another disruptor coming out i'd love to see a, an extra prism being built but we already have it and of course counter attacking with it would be uh, potentially quite beneficial. There's two robotics facilities out right now. Both of them should be pumping disruptors at a high pace. It's not quite what's happening though. Cure playing it slow. Sees this move out. It's gonna snipe the prism instantly. That's a good snipe. Also, I would have loved to see just a scan here. I think if Cure scans this army and knows that he has a 2-2 two -two timing coming in, he probably would just want to fight right now. Because this is such a, a key timing, in my mind. 2-2, two -two, practically maxed. Ghosts are out. Disruptor count is low. Like, we have no serious tech units in here. This is just a gateway army with a couple of Colossus. But the Viking count is sufficient here to deal with that. Uh, Stats is going to jump it. Let's get to push it back. Not the greatest position for Cure there to engage. Played it uh, carefully. Now gets the scan. And I think this should be enough info here for Cure to realize that he can just jump on, right on top of this army. As long as he's not going to get hit by uh, any of these purification novas, he's going to be in a very, very good spot. Battery is available. This is on the fifth base. Second Colossus goes down. Third Colossus in some trouble as well. We'll get blasted here. Big purification nova taking out six to ten supply or so. Uh, Zealots charging in forward. Not a single big EMP has really hit on majority of these zealots. Cure's gonna pull back. Perhaps a little bit too afraid there. Don't mind it though, wanting to preserve his army. Understandable stuff. We have plus one air weapons on the way right now as well. Double mines burrowing. Purification Nova's gonna take out another six or so supply. Another four supply goes down here. Purification Nova's putting in work. 10 more Zealots on the way. We have 10 gateways. 11 gate, 12 gateways. Fleet Beacon coming in. More Disruptors on the way. And this is something that we've seen stats do uh, very frequently. Is where he has this plan. He has this standard setup that he just wants to go through. It's kind of like, like one of these decision trees, you know, where uh, after he sees this, he wants to get X. And after he sees Y, he wants to get Z. And Right now we're in the stage where he's adding in the extra Stargates. Where he already has a good Disruptor count. It's just this army doesn't feel so powerful right now. And he doesn't quite have a crazy amount of cannons either. Which means that being attacked in multiple locations for a little bit is going to be quite scary indeed. Upgrades are continuing here for the uh, air units. It's going to go up to four Stargates total. 
So we're going to get a carrier transition. And now big zealot run buys are going to start happening. Or at least that's what I like. I, I also love to see a prism once again. I think prism's really underutilized in the very, very late game uh, against Terran. Can really change the outcome of a game. You get a big warp in into your opponent's main. And your opponent is already maxed. It means they need to split off. Because reinforcements are not quite going to cut it. First two carriers now on the way. As this is the dominant phase here for stats. Stats is saying, hey, you don't have Liberators right now. That means that I'm going to be winning, most of the time, all these little ground battles. The ground battles will be mine, as long as you don't have a high Liberator count. Cure maybe doesn't quite want to admit it. Um, so he's going to split up and try to kind of pull this Protoss army apart. Don't forget, quite a bit of the, uh, what you call it, of the supply is now going to be stuck in carriers. That is something we have to really keep in mind, especially given the fact that it's 80 worker supply to 66. Now add the two carriers in there. You're looking at what, like maybe a 30 supply difference when it comes to the army supply of what is active here. Guardian Shield's gonna be used, good blink in forward. It's gonna get almost a huge purification of on the right side, none of them really connecting with the army. Bottom side army is gonna be taken out as a couple of purification of us at least hit. And we're gonna need more, I think we have a couple more that can zone this army away, at least for a little bit. The first two carriers are out, four more on the way. It's a risky move. Liberators now being built. Cures preparing for the previous stage. Oh no. That is not correct, my friend. This is the, like liberators are not great against against carriers unless you have them in very big numbers. This is this is not this is like, this is like having a fire Pokemon and entering the, the the water gym. You know, this is the the opposite of what you want. You want grass. Where's your grass here, Cure? We need we need to go back to Vikings. Ship weapons level 2 is on the way. What is our starport count? It's at 2. I mean, a 6 carrier push here feels almost impossible to stop. I love the army split, though. That is brilliant here by Cure. Saying, hey, you're gonna suck split up. Whether it's disruptors or carriers or tempests that you have, it doesn't really matter. It's going to suck against a split up army because Trolls armies just function very well in a big, fat death ball. Purification Nova not quite connecting. Disruptors rotating here towards the top side. Can we get some big Purification Novas? No, it's going to be close. going to be close. All of them get sniped. That is minus six Disruptors here. As stats being pulled apart, he's adding in more carriers. Four more is going to go up to ten. He's practically just switching in a full carrier army. And Cure says, oh, that's really cute. I don't want to fight that. Let me just kill all of your outside bases. And that's exactly what's going down here. Uh, stats not with the ability of, of holding these these side bases doesn't have enough cannons didn't have templar there either to help out perhaps with some storms those are very supply efficient defenses often as uh, two carriers will end up falling here managed to clear a portion of the army at least but it's going to be eight carriers soon against oh, actually almost no anti-air that is still maybe an issue but at the same time this army is just pure ca carrier as long as cure is just running away from the carriers, not engaging, and continuously trying to attempt a base trade. Actually, in Cure is in a fantastic spot. Once again, we're going to get a cancel here on the fourth base, as the carriers now start chasing a portion of this army away. Medivac boost is still available, perhaps needs to be utilized. Cure not quite paying attention. Would have loved to see these Medivacs just boost in towards the main. I think that would have been a fantastic play. Also would have loved to see these Marauders at least try to poke in, or maybe try and scan. Maybe he did, and that's why he doesn't want to go. Here comes a big EMP. Um, but not quite big enough. I actually think Cure went a little bit too fast, because majority of this army right now is Marauders. There's not a whole lot of anti-air. Good individual control on those carriers. Vikings being taken out as well. Another Ghost is gonna fall. Oh, no. Cure really needs to try and base trade. I don't understand what he's doing at home. This is, like, the theory here is quite easy. You keep the Vikings at home near turrets, and you base trade with the rest of your army, but <laughs> it feels like Cure has kind of forgotten how to play the game here for a second. Just desperately trying to hold bases but by using Marauders to shoot at carriers, but that doesn't quite work. Absolute rookie mistake. Blink forward, perhaps takes out one of these Medivacs. That's a big deal. There's not that many Medivacs remaining. And every single bit of starport time is now being sunk into Viking production. Viking numbers are starting to rise. As we have 12 out, we have 13 out with three more on the way. Ship weapons level three halfway done. Don't forget, there's no vehicle plating. So the carriers are still going to be fighting a better fight. Guardian shield nearby as well. Here we go. Vikings moving in forward. Not so sure about that one, Chief. Love to see a sensor tower as well for some added vision on the map. Here we go. 
He's gonna try the EMP, misses two EMPs, which is impressive. And uh, one carrier is gonna get taken out, third in the back definitely helping out. Viking control, is it good enough? Yeah, it seems to be fine as Marauders taking care of the Archons here as well as the Marines in the back and the Ghost helping out at clearing some of these interceptors. It feels like the momentum of this carrier push has largely disappeared at this point as uh, two carriers is simply just not going to be good enough against the reinforcement ability here of Cure, at least I can't imagine that. So, actually, fourth base up, fifth base almost done. Viking production fairly low. The problem is that there's no extra carriers on the way. Like if two more carriers were about to finish at this point, I'd say yee -hee. That's looking good. But now that that isn't the case, I'm not saying ye -ye. this is this is scary. This really is. Cure still mining more as well with the well, has three two orbitals and a planetary. This base is so important. Can't really afford to lose too many workers. Okay, she's got good control here by well, both players, honestly. Nice retargeting. But at the same time, good probe micro here. Does Cure see that? Does he see it? I don't think he quite spotted it. That SCV is going to get... Nope. It's going to survive. Okay, this gets taken out. Here we go. One scan away. Or an EMP. It's going to be an EMP. He wants to preserve the scans. Maybe this doesn't have any scans. Hardly has any energy at this moment. 2100 income against 3k. Uh, the mules are putting in some serious work over here on this uh, fourth base. And this, this unit count just isn't good enough, I think. It's two carriers, there's no Colossus, there's no Disruptors. These gateway units are garbage. Absolute crap. Two more Disruptors on the way as well. Ooh, there we go, it's gonna get a free mine. Yeah, it's something, but you're gonna need more than just a free mine. At the same time, we're seeing a uh, serious switch up. Oh, such a quick response out of cure, by the way. Moving those Marines to... Uh, well, not entire, entirely to safety, but somewhat to safety. It's going to be a little bit better. Stalker's now trying to move him forward. Big Zealot Warping coming in as well. There's no EMPs in this army, I don't think. Well, there are a couple of ghosts. This EMP wasn't used quite yet. Now, here we go. And that means these Stalkers are going to fall. That means that these carriers are going to end up dying. No disruptors with this force. Bottom side, however, did get taken out. Classic with some really cute moves still, but... Is simply just not going to be good enough. Unless these disruptors with some big purification novas could actually hit. Hit a pretty big shot there. Not gonna lie, but yeah, at the end of the day, Cure's control here. Just a little bit too good. And yeah, stats just falling apart there in the mid game. Trying to expand towards the far right side too quick. I think staying there on five bases for a bit longer would have been much, much better for stats. But instead, he uh, tried to get it all. And as a result, got nothing. Close game though, with a, a cute, cute amount of transitions and just a cool playstyle out, out of stats. I really think the, the one thing that was missing here, the, the missing factor, was a higher cannon count as well as Templar to deal with these types of base trady plays that we saw Cure go for in the mid game. Cure is now going to collect this victory. GG gets called. That means we're all tied up here in this best of three. And in our final map of this best of three, we'll be taking it to El Sioni. Has this been a a purely old map setup? We played Psy Delta. Last game was Oceanborn. <laughs> now <I'll see> Oni. <laughs> Seems like they're not too keen over in Korea on the new maps. Ooh, what is this opener? Was this with a sentry? No. It's just Stalker Stalker. Stalker Stalker Twilight. Second gate. Poof. Flop it down there. That's a classic. Ooh, Reaper managed to sneak by. Now, there is a battery here, and he spotted that. It's going to try to get in towards the main base. Hasn't seen the Twilight. This Reaper is not going to achieve anything, and it's also not going to get a scout here. So this has been a, a fairly useless Reaper. It is going to end up dying. Stats giving his opponent a little bit of hope there. I mean, you're seeing three Stalkers. I think you know what you're fighting against. What the hell is this? It's going to be three gate robo, pure stalker opener. This is kind of cute, honestly. Like, this really is just kind of cute. I don't mind this at all. I really don't mind this at all. You got the battery in the natural. So, really, the only thing that we're missing is some units on the high ground. And that's going to be this double stalker warping, right? That's going to be over here. It's the only thing that makes any sense. 
That's the only thing that makes... Oh, it's gonna... Oh, no, this also makes sense. Double stalker in the natural and then three stalkers in the main. I actually like that even more because you have the battery here, so you need less stalkers. Three stalkers in the main, gonna put in some serious work. Love in the pylon spread as well. Stats here with such a good and honestly smart setup. What a what a sick way of playing. Stats playing very different types of openers from what we've been seeing from the highest level of, of tosses. Um, but that doesn't mean it's bad, it just means it's different. Sometimes different is good. And in this case, I am actually liking this a whole lot. I think this is such a cute, cool, kind of a sexy opener. This is what it is. It's a sexy opener. You, know, you play something like pure stalkers. It's also just showing what you're fond of, you know, very early on. It's like, no, none of that adept garbage, pretending like you might be playing a star. It's like, no. Just like, I'm committing to the blink full force. Look at this. This pylon over here on the left side is going to be spotting that raven. And, and Stats, he's, he's psychic. He knows there's going to be a raven popping in. He's going to see it. He's going to see it. Stalkers, going to be moving towards the left. We'll be going for the catch over here on that left side. Ooh, are they? They could. They could go for the catch on the left side. But so far, they're not going to. So far, they are not going to. Just relaxing. Col Colossus now on the way. We have our first observer making its way over... Uh, to the other side of the map. Thermal lens coming out. Yeah, we're going to see charge research soon as well. What's our stalker count? Like eight? Beautiful number. I think... Yeah, I actually think seven is the perfect amount of stalkers. I've been I've been thinking about the perfect number of stalkers a lot. Oh, blink forward. He's going to get one shot. One and a half. Volleys over here. Seven is the perfect number. It allows you to afford everything uh, gas-wise pretty uh, comfortably. Pretty comfortably. It's going to be a double tank push out here. Is this not going to have combat shield? That's a mistake, isn't it? That is a mistake. Oh, that's a huge blunder here. Now he realizes he wanted to start his concussive shells already. If this push was hitting with combat shield, two tanks... This would be a, a, a serious push. This, this actually would have been a very serious push, you know? Stats is a serious, serious player, serious man. Oh, these two get cleaned up. There's no stalkers nearby, though. So, perhaps can still do something. Don't love the positioning here on the gateways. Gotta be real about that. Five more gates are on the way. This pylon's gonna get taken out. Left side pylon got taken out. That's the... That's one of these things that's uh, obviously a big disadvantage. If you're using a lot of pylons for spotters, rather than uh, units that can move or observers that remain invisible. For stalkers, stay over here in the corner. Another pylon's gonna get taken out. Yeah, stats now uh, being knocked into a supply block. Forge here. Under some pretty heavy fire. Matter of fact, three and four being boosted across the map. Cure still manages to find a, an angle here. Cure is so good with movement. Cure's movement is really, really sick. This forge falling is a big deal. That's actually a big deal. Uh, and I. Another thing here is that stats can't really easily clear this position either. It's not like stats can just walk over there and start start winning. How does he know, by the way, that this is happening? That is such this is a crazy move. He's going to lose both of these pylons, so... Ah. Come on, man. That's super frustrating, for sure. Raven gets targeted down. These tanks from the low ground. Ooh, lots of marines! No, not going to get targeted by the Colossus. Some uh, Miss Micro there. There's not enough units in the main. There are not enough units in the main at all. Gonna get a five stalker defense. Snipes one of these medevacs. And we're gonna need four more zealots being warped in. Every single stalker does go down though. And these mines actually dishing out quite a bit of damage. Cure in, uh, in a neat spot. It's losing a few units. Perhaps a few units too many. But has a third base. Equal worker supply. No fourth base yet for the Protoss player. Like this is... And he, he's taking out gases as well. Hey, this is just looking good. Let's face it. This is just looking good here for Cure. Needs to be careful, though, for the next... Like... The next 45 seconds. The next 45 seconds are scary. He has no units out on the map. There are three Colossus and there are zero Vikings. So a straight-up move out across the map could actually be quite dangerous. However, if Cure manages to find his way across the map... That's not going to be possible. This is a huge scout. This is a huge scout. This is much bigger for stats than it is for cure, by the way. Because I think stats is actually going to switch it up. 
Uh, I thought he was going to continue attacking and then move with the prism towards the middle. But that's not going to be the case here. These two medifacts still moving towards the right as this mine is going to get triggered. Stats using his entire army now to try and clear this double drop. Needs to kill it. Can't uh, spend time chasing it away. Needs to absolutely kill both of these drops. At the same time, we have an attack towards the third base. Recall inevitable. Are we going to get a recall? This base perhaps toast? That's just two Colossus. Oh. Stats kind of getting away with murder there. Absolutely. Battery in the far back, by the way. Much further back than we usually see with this type of uh, play. Two Marauders stayed alive in the medevac. Stats is trying to fight for map control here. At the same time, two Zealots hitting this net. We don't have a Dark Shrine yet. Boy, if there were a couple of DTs here, that would be serious trouble. Even now, this might be serious trouble. Big warping in towards the main base. 4CC is on the way there as well. Would love to see these Zealots just go for depots or an eBay. Some of the stuff here. Okay, yeah. We're going to focus on some of these depots. As the Prism flies towards the bottom side. Double Marauder is not going to be capable of doing anything. Like a single Zealot warping is going to deal with that. Just having one Stalker in position. Like this really... This is just nothing. This is absolutely nothing. It's pointless. SCV's being pulled back home too quickly as well. It means that nine workers are going to fall. And overall, this has been extremely good here for stats. The last, like, minute and a half or so. Eight minutes in, I thought this was looking good for Cure. Ten minutes and 34 seconds in, I think this is looking phenomenal here for stats. Stats with just overall some cute play. Like, <laughs> loving this triple stalker opener that he showed. I'm loving this sentry opener that he played. Wasn't as big a fan of the robo build that he did in game number one, but it won the game. So, you know, never never flame a guy that's winning. That's uh, one of my many rules in StarCraft. There's two Vikings here on the far right. Let's see if Stats is going to be capable of dodging that here with the Prism Speed, perhaps. Oh, he's going to accidentally catch up with his Vikings. This is like walking with the people you just said goodbye to, you know? You're ready to split off, and then you realize you both have to go in the same direction. Get this awkward, let's pretend we never met. Actually once had this with a, an old classmate of mine, who I met at like a train station. And then uh, we went in, you know, we, we, were, we were out of conversation topics. So we, you know, I mo we moved different direction to go into the train. I said goodbye, and then I sat right in front of her boyfriend who was waiting for her in the train, like in the same, you know, the, the same four seater, kind of making out and stuff. And she was uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable. I should have left, but the train was full. All right, big attack here coming in, potentially. Who makes out in a train anyway? That wasn't on me. It's messed up. It's uncomfortable. Especially in a forest eater. Alright. Um, what do we have here? Seven disruptors. Yes, sir. 2-2 two -two is about to finish up. Probably wants to wait for that. I, I don't think... I don't think this is the timing where you want to attack stats. Ten more seconds. That's all we want to wait for. Now, there's no liberators. And what is our Marauder count? Marauder count is 14, 10 Vikings. Now, these Colossus are toast, okay? So the way you want to attack here as a Protoss is you don't, I think. Because this is... this Like, you're one surround away from losing your entire army. You think you have a good army until you see the Terran army just absolutely burst over you. Sixth base is here. I think what you really want is higher gate count. I'm loving these 13 gates. As we're seeing the Fleet Beacon, Stargate setup, all coming in clean. Prism on the far left. Is this still the first Prism? Yes, it is. I actually think that that's... Is, 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 uh. I think this transition is too late. He should have been building carriers right now. While Cure believes his opponent has some, you know, some map control. Once again, these side bases are not being defended well. This is actually a similar mistake as we saw in game number two. Where this transition is much riskier than it looks because the transition takes like three and a half minutes to really complete from start to finish maybe even more like four minutes or so so you need serious defense you need good map vision everywhere ideally with observers now there's a couple of observers zealots now moving in but he's buying time for nothing we don't even have a single carrier in production quite yet look how how little is happening right now in this game it's crazy Stats is wasting time here. He's absolutely wasting time. Another thing he could do, by the way, is take out his own Colossus. 
fight without Colossus. Because then the opponent sees, hey, no Colossus, I don't need Vikings. Because right now, Vikings are out already. And the Viking count is increasing. We have four more on the way. It's going to go up to 16. Big blink forward. Here we go. You want these Vikings to land. And you want these Vikings to be taken out. And now you want to be careful here. Purification Nova, poof. Purification Nova, poof. That's what you want. Slow but sure. Observer's going to get taken out. I think we want another Observer instantly. This is not enough cannons. There's no Templar here. Once again, I'm going to mention it. Split armies are going to absolutely destroy what Stats is doing here. Because there's so much supply stuck in these Stargates. And that is most definitely a mistake. Planetary on the left is going to get taken out. So it's going to be a race against the clock here. Something got recalled. Was that just the Disruptors? It was just the Disruptors. Needs to be careful not to push too aggressively forward though. One base went down. Oh, earlier lost all disruptors, of course, on Oceanborn. This base is just going to fall as well. So that's two bases versus one. And it's usually not considered a, a great trade if you're the one losing two bases. And these disruptors are... I mean, they're cute now, but once they're out of shots... It's not as funny anymore, is it, mate? I'm going to get a wonky pickup. Four more carriers on the way. Stats lost two bases. Very similar to that last game. Very similar to that last game. As the mass Airtos transition has now started. It's rare to see carriers versus Terran, although we've been seeing it a little bit more as of late. I think it's going to be less rare as well. After seeing stats use it this much. He seems keen on it, but I really believe that taking a 6th base with this is kind of ridiculous. You don't need more than 10 gases in order to play this. You need time. What you need is time, not to be more spread out. And how do you win times? By building cannons, by running by, by pretending to have map control. And a sixth base doesn't help with any of that. Like, the sixth base could have just been seven cannons over here. You know, that's, 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 that's much better, in my mind. I even think four bases is just enough. You can, you, can, you can afford a lot on four base eight gas. But Stats is managing to get there. Now, that doesn't mean that this is like an auto win. Like... Whenever Protoss transitions into carriers, that is a very long, painful, and scary transition. And then when you get there, you kind of wonder, like, well, was this, <laughs> you know, is this truly what I wanted? It's like if you live in America and you take like a 14-hour flight to Belgium. Like it's painful, your knees are cramped, it sucked. And then you land in Belgium, it's like, ah, the promised land. And you realize Belgium itself also sucks. It's similar with the carrier. It's a long, painful journey really, to... Uh, to a crappy road. That's the reward there at the end. It's gonna go up to 12 carriers. That's a good amount of carriers. And he's gonna have nice upgrades on it as well. Disappointed by Cure's inability to build a second armory and start vehicle plating upgrades at some point. Armor upgrades for Vikings and Liberators would be absolutely huge here. Storm now is on the way. Scans himself to make sure there's nothing on top of him. We have turrets building. This is exactly how Maru plays. Except Maru would be building eight turrets. And he'd just be sitting here with a very, uh, a very sufficient, you know, significant forge. Uh, forge. Not a forge. Maru was capable of building forges. I bet he would do it as well. Nasty kind of rusher. This is not that great of a setup. He just lost all of his liberators. Or all of them. Three or four for free. Now he's going to take out another base. Movement is good. Control of the army wasn't very good. The amount of turrets here on the map is simply too low as well. So, although I'm liking some of the things here that Cure is doing, especially when it comes to the movement, I'm not really liking what he's doing in the, the actual micro part. The, the micro portion isn't quite as hot. Once again, Stats is going to get uh, reset here to just four bases. And this is pretty much what we've been expecting. It's like four bases, and then once those are very secure, like sufficient cannons and... Ideally, still a Templar. Then we can start thinking of a fifth. You gotta take it slow. You really gotta take it slow. But Stats is gearing up for a big push. There are no turrets here. If the Interceptors can come out of the Carriers pre-fight, that's a huge deal. That's an absolutely huge deal. And they are out. That's a lot of Interceptors. 88 Interceptors with 2-2 upgrades right now. Fuel plating on the way, but not out quite yet. I think Cure is actually... I don't want to say he's dead, but he's in, in a fairly bad spot here. So all these interceptors are now out. Get some serious focus fire on this command center. Okay, he's gonna move over. Try and take out some of these Vikings. That's not really working though, is it? I don't think so. There's no splash here. Here come the storms on top of the Vikings. 
Now it's going to take out a lot of these Vikings. What did this do with the army? Six carriers remaining. Um, but zero interceptors. There's legit no interceptors. So what does Stats need to do right now? He needs to piss off. He needs to go back home. Find a way where he can rebuild some interceptors. Warping some stalkers here. And he should be absolutely fine. There we go. Big stalker warping coming in right now. More purification novas as well. Carriers do not want to be chasing at this moment. Planetary hasn't died, which is a very big deal. I'd love to see some more carriers in production as well. Once again, after the initial carrier transition, Stats decides that carriers perhaps is not what he wants anymore. And is now just adding in stalkers, kind of as like a as the panic button here. Um, the problem with the panic button is that the, the stalker is not actually that good. I think the, the first warp in of stalkers was good. Now I would love to see just another round of carriers being added in. I think that would not be necessarily very bad. Stats believes that he's on a timer here. I'm not sure if he's on a timer. I really, I, I just don't know. I mean, there's 13 Vikings out. The starport, there's four starports. Yeah, a serious Viking production. I mean, this is a scary push out, I'm not gonna lie. This is a very scary push out. These are 3 2 carriers against 3 1 air units from the opponent. Purification Novas are available. As long as the interceptors are out, I am deadly afraid here for Cure. One carrier is gonna get sniped pretty much for free Archons, getting some big splash hits onto those Vikings. But one carrier has gone down. 14 more workers have fallen here as well. Another Stalker Warping comes in. Can we get a blink forward? maybe snipe one or two of these uh one or two of these vikings really all you need is taking out four or five more vikings you're gonna be just fine single liberator taking out 10 workers on the other side as well we get a blink in forward purification novas coming in is it too late oh all of these are gonna get sniped they're all gonna get sniped one no not a single purification purification nova finishes up there as uh, now it's just stalkers no carriers no disruptors and no prison man in really similar fashion stats is gonna lose this game with Oh my god. What felt like a, a little bit of a throw almost here, even. <sighs> Had a powerful push, but didn't work. Cure with the W in the end. I love the way that stats played, though. Like, the first 14... Nah, the first 12 minutes were really, really good. I think fantastic stuff. And then, once we get to that carrier transition, I think it gets a little bit finicky. I, I, I really think there is some improvement there to be made in just the general plan. And whether that's getting more control with DTs initially, or um, just staying on less bases, like being more compact, basically. Uh, more cannons, more Templar, more of a campy style, because you're building a campy unit. Like, the, the carrier is not a high-paced unit. You need loads of them for it to be useful. Either way, here with W. It's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy this GSL series. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thanks so much. And bye-bye.